All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Again, this is Trevor Drake with the Clean Energy Resource Team, CERTS, and the Great Plains Institute. We're one of several partners that have uh, worked on this community solar subscriber collaborative project. Uh, just a few logistics to start out with. If you want to be able to speak, you have to enter in uh, the access code and the uh, pin that's provided to you on screen. So if you're not actually looking at uh, at the screen for the webinar, uh, just tune in there and enter in the pin that you've been given. If, uh, if you're not able to do that, I won't be able to unmute you, but you can still uh, type questions into the chat box and I'll be able to uh, repeat those on your behalf. So uh, I should also mention, um, if you'd like to say something, raise your hand, click the, the hand raise icon, and I will unmute you and we can bring you on the line. And I'm happy to do that as we go along. So just to give a quick background about uh, CERTS and, and where we come from, we're a statewide partnership. We work across the state of Minnesota, and uh, our partnership is made up of these four organizations. And I work at the Great Plains Institute, and our role in the partnership is to run the metro region of CERTS. We have seven regions, and we all do this work under a shared mission, which is to connect individuals and their communities to the resources they need to identify and implement community-based clean energy projects. So in this particular project, uh, we're playing a role of a convener, and we're working with the partners that you see on the screen. As you know, Met Council uh, took on the very heavy burden of um, running the procurement and negotiation process and is also providing some technical assistance. We have a steering committee for this project uh, made up of the city of Minneapolis and Hennepin and Ramsey counties. So together we've been working on this and uh, developing this opportunity for folks. Just to briefly review the timeline, uh, this started back in the summer of 2015. Many of you attended an event where we told you about this opportunity. Uh, Met Council then went and published an RFP to solicit Solar Garden subscriptions on behalf of anybody who would sign a letter of intent. Those were due shortly after the RFP was published, and then they issued an addendum to the RFP with the list of everybody who had signed, which includes all of you. Uh, vendor proposals were due in August, and then uh, there was a selection process that followed. So. There was a selection committee at the Met Council that looked at all of their proposals, uh, ended up advancing five vendors, and then we took the available uh, load from those vendors and the desired subscription amounts that each of you had put in your letter of intent and created a lottery process which would match up potential subscribers with uh, vendors' load by location. And I think, as you all know, but just to be clear, in the Excel Energy solar garden program, a garden has to be in the same or an adjacent county to its subscribers. So that's why we needed this lottery process to match up loads by location. Uh, this timeline doesn't, doesn't quite tell the whole picture, which is that uh, we ran into a few data privacy issues which made the timeline go a little longer. Uh, and, and because of that, we have run the lottery and, and had to run the lottery for Met Council to finish its process and make this public. Uh, and then they had some additional processing to do. And in that time period, vendors had uh, sold off some of their load. We had gone past the point where we needed, where, where we were able to legally hold them uh, to their to the load they had proposed. So we had to uh, sort of re-up that lottery and run a supplemental lottery, which you were all made aware of. Um, so finally, we're at the point where we've been working really hard to get to, which is where you've all been offered some results of that lottery, and you have opportunities in front of you. Uh, and you can say yes or no to those offered opportunities. So there's a deadline of February 29th, and it's not actually a deadline to execute uh, subscription agreements, but it's a deadline to let us know the direction that you're heading. We know that uh, signing these agreements can take some time and requires you to go through processes at your entities, uh, which can be you know, going to council or going to an environmental commission before going to council. We just want you to let us know by February 29th uh, where you're headed with these. So if there are some where you, you know uh, you're not going to go after that opportunity, we'd like to know because we're going to run a second lottery process and make those tickets available. And likewise, if you know you're, you actually would like to sign a subscription agreement but haven't been able to do so yet because your process is going longer, that's okay. 
We just want to know in writing what your plans are so that we can prepare for that second lottery. Are there any questions before we go into uh, talking about how to evaluate subscriptions that folks have? And just for review, I'm not going to read through these, but these are the these are your responsibilities as participants in this project. This is what we're asking you to do at this time. And so again, if you have a question, uh, click that hand raised button, and I will unmute you. Or of course, you can type something into the chat box. Uh, just looking to see if there are any raised hands here. I don't think there are. Um, I'm going to unmute Brian Milberg here. Brian, you had a question about audio, and I just want to make sure you've, you've gotten on and that you can hear me okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? I can. Now you're unmuted. Do you want to add anything, Brian, about the process? No, not now. I just, just wanted to test if it was working. Okay, wonderful. Uh, and Mary, I see that you have a question. Mary Takach is with Ramsey County and also on the steering committee. Mary, did you have anything you wanted to add at this point? Uh, <clears throat> Trevor, I was curious how many people are on the call right now? Oh, uh, we have 15 attendees on the call. Okay, great. Yep. All right. Uh, I'm going to continue moving then, and we're going to get to the, the point of this webinar, which is to talk about how you can go about evaluating these subscription opportunities that you've been offered. So I want to just briefly review kind of how this works from the subscriber perspective. In Excel Energy's program, unlike uh, municipal and cooperative solar garden programs, uh, they're using a third-party operator model where private companies develop and build the gardens and find subscribers for those gardens, uh, and then work with Excel to, to make the connection. So as a subscriber, uh, you would be making a subscription payment to a private company, not to Excel Energy, which is the developer that's organized the garden. Um, they're going to find a host site for that garden and build it and operate it. The electricity from that garden is going to go uh, back into the grid to Excel Energy, the individual electron, electrons do not go to you as a subscriber, per se. Um, the developers are also going to let Excel Energy know who is subscribed to their garden. So in your case, if you have multiple buildings, uh, they're going to have record of that and enter that into Excel's system to track this. Uh, and then Excel Energy is going to issue you as a subscriber a bill credit. So I have these arrows in red and green to show this where you have money going out the door in the form of a subscription payment to the developer, and you have money coming in the door in the form of bill credits that show up on each bill for the premises that are subscribed to a garden. So it actually shows up as a line item on a bill for each individual premise, which for most folks is, is one building. Uh, occasionally, build, really large buildings will have two premises, but for the most part, uh, it's just one. Um, for this solicitation, Met Council asks for proposals that are pay as you go. There's another way to set this up, which is pay up front, where over a 25 year term, uh, you would make the payment for that 25 years on day one. You would have prepaid all of your uh, subscription payments, and you every month you'll get a bill credit in the door. This is different. This is pay as you go, where every month you're making a payment to the developer, and every month you're getting uh, a payment in the door from Excel Energy in the form of that bill credit. And one of the nice things about doing it this way is that you're paying for production. So if the garden doesn't produce, you're not paying for production that wasn't produced. Of course, there's an opportunity cost uh, to that uh, in that if you had signed up for a garden that was producing more, you might be getting uh, more of a benefit. But at least you're not, you haven't paid up front and you're not getting anything out of it. So these are the current Excel Energy bill credit rates. And again, uh, these are the, this is what you can expect to get as a bill credit on your utility bill from Excel Energy. And it's a dollar per kilowatt hour amount. So dollars per kilowatt hour produced by the garden. 
And in this particular solicitation, they only asked, asked for proposals where uh, the RECs, the renewable energy certificates, are being sold to Excel Energy. I'll explain in a moment what exactly that means. Um, but in looking at this table, we're looking at that middle line, the, the boxes that are in green. And so you get uh, an additional incentive for having those renewable energy certificates sold to Excel Energy. And your buildings will fall in, in one of two uh, customer classes. The first is small general service. These will be smaller buildings. And then the other is general service or demand metered. And these are larger buildings. So when you subscribe with a particular developer, you may have a mix of buildings that are small general and general service. And it's important to know that the bill credit for those buildings differs depending on uh, which class that premise falls into. And I'll explain in a moment how, how you look at that when you're evaluating a proposal. And again, if you have any questions along the way, I'll unmute you and give you a chance to talk. So uh, Anne, I see that you've got a question. I've unmuted you. I have a couple of questions. Um, in the previous slide, you said if the garden isn't productive, um, how would that happen? Uh, it would have, I, I think the main way it would happen is if the developer does not do a good job of maintaining it or uh, if they're, or if the expected production is not happening. So if they're not getting the amount of sunlight that they predicted they would get, uh, it may be less. But I think the key risk is if, for whatever reason, the developer is not doing their maintenance. Okay, and then on the rate sheet that we're on right now, um, you're having us look at that middle row, but um, so two questions here. One, it looks like you actually get less reimbursement if you're a larger building than a small, and that does, that seems kind of reverse logic. And then what about the other lines? Are they available? Is the 15 cents per kilowatt hour accessible or not? That's a great question. Uh, and I and have speaking, <laughs> yeah, please do, Brian. So the the two rows, the one that starts with 0 0.02 and the one that starts with 0 0.03, those were to add extra incentives if people wanted to keep the renewable energy credits. And the smaller the garden, the more expensive the electricity is, just because of economies of scale. So that's why the two cent versus three cent change. The columns describe the type of electrical service you have, and yes, the general service demand metered, that's your larger accounts, but your average electricity cost at those accounts are, is less than it is at a small general service account. At the city of Minneapolis, our small general service accounts are registering between 11 and 13 cents a kilowatt hour when you add in all the various charges. The general service demand meter were more like eight cents to nine cents per kilowatt hour. So that the PUC knew that there were different rates, and that's how they came up with the columns. Okay, thank you. And thanks, Brian, for that clarification. Uh, yeah, the the rates are set based on the annual uh, the kind of average electricity rate for that customer class. So that is, in fact, why they differ. Uh, any other? questions on this particular table. Okay. Um, so I, I just want to touch briefly on these renewable energy certificates. Uh, in a really, really basic sense, um, if you can imagine splitting the electricity that, that is renewable uh, from its environmental attributes. So for any kind of renewable energy generating facility, You've got electricity coming out of it, and then you have these environmental attributes, all of the reasons that this electricity uh, is more environmentally friendly than fossil fuel-powered electricity. And uh, so here's the description of what a renewable energy certificate is. It represents the property rights to the environmental, social, and other non-power qualities of renewable electricity generation. Its associated attributes and benefits can be sold separately from the physical electricity. Um, and what it is is uh, for every 1,000 kilowatt hours or one megawatt hour of electricity placed on the grid, 
um, you get one renewable energy certificate. And so that electricity, if it's sold separately, or excuse me, if that certificate is sold separately from the electricity, um, then the electricity is no longer considered renewable or green. So why does this matter? It, it changes the kind of claim that you can make with, uh, with renewable power. So in this case, because you all are, are selling these renewable energy certificates to Excel Energy, and that's the system that's set up, right, you actually can't say uh, we are renewably powered. You can't make that public claim. Uh, you can make a claim to say something like, um, we have participated in this solar garden project, which puts more renewable electricity on Excel Energy's grid. You can say that, but you yourself are actually not renewably powered because you don't own those renewable energy certificates. Um, and the, the steering committee made the decision that in, in this case, for this solicitation, it made more sense to sell these certificates and, and get the economic benefit from them than uh, to keep them. Okay, so that's Rex. Uh, and again, just to summarize, uh, we're looking at the middle row here for gardens greater than 250 kilowatts in size, and the incentive is two cents uh, on top of the standard bill credit. So moving on, uh, there are four general subscription pricing structures for solar gardens. Um, and different developers are offering these in different ways. So this is kind of a, a basic way to look at what you might see in any given subscription agreement. The first is a flat rate. So this is where your, your monthly payment to the developer stays constant over the entire term. Over 25 years, what you pay every month will be the same amount, no changes. The second is a rate with an escalator. So it's sort of like number one, but uh, you're starting to pay that monthly payment for the first year, and then every year that rate is going to go up by some percentage. Uh, normally, it's you know you see something like one, two, or three percent. It's going to go up over time. The third, uh, and this is sort of a different structure, is a percent discount from the bill credit. So this says that whatever the bill credit is that you get from Excel Energy, you're going to pay the developer a certain percentage less than that. So they're guaranteeing that you're going to uh, make money on every kilowatt hour that's produced. And then the last is it's the same thing, but instead of it being a percent difference from the bill credit, it's a dollar difference. So they might say, for every, uh, for every kilowatt hour that's produced, you're getting a bill credit from Excel Energy, and you're always going to pay us one cent or two cents less than that bill credit. So uh, another way to, to say this is that for every kilowatt hour produced by the garden, you're making one cent or two cents. So at this point, I'm going to move over to the spreadsheet, which is the search calculator. And this is available on the lottery website. I recently updated it with requests from a few folks. So I want to start just by saying that this calculator was originally created to allow you to compare proposals for the same load. And in looking at your lottery results, you're actually comparing proposals for different loads. You've got a certain load that's, uh, that's matched to uh, a certain proposal. So this isn't a great fit, but I'm going to tell you how you can use it to still get what you need at the end. Um, and I'm going to pause for, actually, see a few questions have come in here. So I'm going to pause for a moment. Leah, I see that you've got a question. I unmuted you. <laughs> yeah, this is Leah. And I had a question on the the rate structure that Ann had brought up because some of the subscription agreements don't specify that their um, subscription rate is specific to general service. So in all actuality, that needs to be clarified because if it's not for general service, then it could be for small general service, and therefore there could be additional cost savings associated with that. That's a great point. Thanks, Leah. Um, so I will contact the – some of them do specify that it's only for small general service, the rate that they provided, but some of them don't. So that's a clarification that we need to make. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, I actually have been trying to do some of that clarifying. So at this point, I know that SolarStone does not have different rates depending on the 
premise type. They have a, a one rate. Um, and I think that the two that I don't know about are Sunshare and True North. I haven't been able to clarify with them. As I understand, US Solar in their subscription agreement does have two rates listed pretty clearly yeah. in their price and payment section. So that's just a clarification that needs to happen. Yeah. Thanks, Leah. Yeah, we'll have to work on that. Um, and I see that we've also got a question from Garrett Beck. Garrett, are you on the line? Did you want to ask your question out loud? I am, yes. Um, so when I was doing some reading over the last year, I noticed that Excel is offering this 2% or 2 cent credit um, because there's a state requirement that they have a certain output uh, through solar energy. And I also read that as they meet that percentage that they are required to have, that there's potential that that credit could be reduced or go away completely. Um, is that something we as a group need to be aware of and concerned about as it impacts the rebates that we get ultimately? Could I speak to that, Trevor? Please. I was just going to ask you to. <laughs> yeah. So that's an excellent question. And actually, some of that has already occurred. Just this week, Excel filed a docket saying, you know that 09914 number that we gave you for the base rate was on that rate slide? That was our estimation of what our costs were going to be in 2015. That's how Excel came up with that number. Well, Excel filed and said, you know what? We didn't spend as much money on fuel costs. And so we were able to go back and we're changing that number. And here he's showing you, if you look at the bottom where it says general service, you'll see they're showing you the 11914. That's with that two cents. Well, it dropped to 1174. Okay, now it doesn't sound like much. It's 0.2 cents per kilowatt hour. But when you're buying hundreds of thousands of kilowatt hours, a month, it starts to add up. So, hey, Trevor, yeah. can I speak to that too? Yeah, please. I'm sorry, Brian, if you're not done. No, go ahead. Um, so, Hennepin County has also been evaluating that because, you know, these numbers are not locked in until the developer actually signs their power purchase agreement with Excel, which could happen anywhere from now to two years from now. So, what? I think agencies really need to do is evaluate what the termination clauses are in their contracts. Is it allow you to get out of this contract if bill credits change? Some of them allow you to do that. Some of them allow you just 30 days notice. No reason. So take a look at the termination clause in your contract and see if it allows you to get out of the contract if you sign it based on any of these changes that could happen. I think that's the most critical thing to consider. And, and I agree with Leah. When Trevor walks through this calculator, you'll see that depending on your escalator cause for the uh, rate you're paying to the solar garden, depending on that, depending upon this bill credit, as you asked, if the bill credit goes down over time, I mean, you can actually start losing money. So. You do have to be careful, and I totally agree with Leah, be very clear on what the termination clauses are and if they're acceptable to you. Thank you. Thanks, Jared, for the question, and thanks, Leah and Brian, for responding. Um, <laughs> Leah, Brian, Mary, and Brad Gehring from Met Council. I'm going to leave all of you unmuted uh, to allow you to just kind of jump in as we go. And Anne with HCMC, uh, is this a question or did I mess up your hand raise again? No, I have a question. Um, can you give okay. me a general <laughs> description of the difference between general or small general service versus general service? I can do that. So general service is considered any account where you're getting charge demand charges, okay? 
So, and small general service is where you are not getting charged demand charges. Typically, it's any account where the demand is greater than 25 kilowatts at any time. So if your demand is more than 25 kilowatts, you get bumped into general service. Or you're getting a separate demand charge on your bill. Okay, thank you. And kind of dollar-wise, if you're spending probably three to four hundred dollars a month or more on your electricity, it's most likely you're going to be in general service. Thanks, Brian. And uh, sounds like that clarifies the question. Okay, so I'm going to pull up this calculator again. And as I said before, this was originally created to allow you to compare proposals for the same load. And you've got different loads for each developer, for each proposal that you have. So I'm going to walk through how you can use this for that. Um, this hey, Trevor. This, Trevor, before, yeah. before we begin, I noticed that in your uh, line two where you're going into the input section there, you've got 1,200, uh, I suppose, that kilowatt hours per megawatt there. And uh, it recognizes that Met Council uses a much higher number there. I wanted to mm -hmm. just make a, I just wanted to make a little clarification about the difference in those numbers. <clears throat> They're not just uh, random selections. Um, the uh, 1650 number is based on 200 KWAC, where the 1200 number is based on 200 KWDC, um, so it's uh, it's just a difference in how you're looking at the size of the of the solar array. And uh, in this case, in all cases here with the bidding and all that, we're dealing with the AC number. So Thanks, all I'm Dad. saying is that that 1200 should be the 1650 number. <clears throat> okay. Then let's make it that. Thank you. So starting out with, um, and this is updated, so this doesn't match the version that was previously there. The old version had you starting with uh, this row 10, the kilowatt hours. And now I've switched it, so you're starting with your subscription size. So I've put in the size of an average ticket in the lottery, which is 200 kilowatts. Um, and then this is that production factor. So how many kilowatt hours do you expect annually per one uh, kilowatt of capacity? And as Brad just made the point, it matters whether you're talking about AC or DC. So uh, let's use this 1649 number. Uh, and then we multiply those to get the annual expected production from your share of the garden in kilowatt hours. Um, so then we have the starting bill credit rate. And again, this will be uh, one of the, this will be one of two numbers and we have the residential one in here, but um, this is the number that you put in from that table that we were looking at. Um, so this is the standard rate. And then on top of that, you have the rec. So in our case, this will always be two cents. And this row 11 will be either the small general applicable number or the general service number, which is sometimes also called demand metered. So you'll enter that in. Um, and then below that are some assumptions. There's a panel degradation factor, which basically says over time, the panels are not going to produce as much as they did when they were first plugged in. Um, there's the expected annual electricity price increase. So 2.65% is Excel Energy's uh, annual electricity rate increase uh, averaged out over the past 13 years. If we look back more recently, it, it looks a little higher. And if we look farther back, it, it looks a little bit lower. So 2.65 is what CERTS is using. Uh, Brad, I think in your guys' calculator, you guys are using 2.75%. Um, and so you're I able to the change that. Yeah, the 2.65 is a better number, I think. Okay. And uh, uh, we probably and will be changing that in ours, too. 
Okay. And then lastly, you've got the discount rate. So I'm not a finance professional, and Jason Willett, who is a finance professional, asked us to include this. Um, this is essentially saying that your savings over a 25-year period, if you don't include a discount rate, um, it's going to look like you're saving more than you actually will because the value of your money in 20 years is not the same as the value of that money this year. It's going to go down by some amount, and that's what this discount rate is. Uh, this is tied to your entity's average cost of capital, and so I would just say, you know, I'm putting 4% because I see that's what the Met Council has used in their calculator, but ask your entity's finance director or your financial counsel for what this discount rate should be. And Brad, do you want to add anything about this? No, I think you did a good job. I mean, the whole concept here is if I... Um, Somebody says, I'll give you a dollar today or a dollar a year from now, you'd obviously take the dollar today uh, because uh, you could get interest on that dollar and so it would be worth more in a year from now. So um, this is this is taking that into account. It's saying, well, if somebody is promising, a, promising me a dollar several years from now, it's worth less. Um, so that's that's all this is saying. Thanks. Uh, Anne, did you have a question? Is the 4% uh, discount rate applied every year? Yes, that's yes. something that goes in every year. It's part of what, if you did it in Excel, that's part of what's called the net present value calculation. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one of the things I said before is that this was intended for comparing multiple proposals for the same load. And so when you enter in 200 kilowatts here, it's going to take that 200 kilowatts and apply it to all of the tabs along the bottom. Uh, and it's going to do the same thing for the bill credit rate and the rec payment. It's going to assume that you're comparing proposals for the same load across uh, a number of different developers. And actually, you're not going to do that. So um, I just want to make that really clear, and, and we'll jump into those tabs in a second. Uh, so the second kind of section here is the information for the individual proposals, and I've colored these according to those four pricing structures that we covered before. So the, the flat rate, the rate with an escalator, percent discount, and then dollar discount. So I just put in some kind of dummy numbers in here. Um, I put in for the flat rate uh, a starting payment to the developer of 11 cents and 11 and a half cents. And the subscription payment escalator in, in for these two is zero because there is no escalator. So that payment will be the same across the entire term. In the rate with escalator, I've also put in some starting payments. But as you see, uh, there's an escalator built in. So in that column E, rate with escalator one, you're starting at 10 cents, and that's going to go up by 2% each year. And uh, same thing with the next one, 10 and a half cents, going up by 1.75% each year. Uh, so the next two sections here, the, the green and orange structures, uh, the first is a percent discount. So this is just saying that whatever the bill credit is that you receive, you will get a, uh, you will pay the developer 10% less than that. You'll make 10% on every kilowatt hour. Uh, and this one is 8% less than that. Uh, in the dollar discount, it's the same concept, but it's uh, instead of a percentage, it's a dollar amount. So this is saying you'll make one cent on every kilowatt hour, and this is saying you'll make eight tenths of a cent on every kilowatt hour. And it's automatically calculating that based on your bill credit. I will say uh, some of the developers in this uh, solicitation do have this kind of structure, and the one thing that's really important to clarify is whether they're taking that discount off of the bill credit, including the rec payment, or not including it. I've seen it written in two different ways. Uh, for the most part, I think it's taking the bill credit, uh, excuse me, taking the discount off of the bill credit that includes the rec payment, but it's worth clarifying that with the developer. I'm going to pause here and see if there are any questions on these pricing structures. It doesn't look like there are. So. 
Uh, we're going to jump into the specific tabs here. I'm going to click on this fixed rate one tab, and I'm going to show you how you can use this for different proposals. So because you put 200 kilowatts in the welcome page, 200 is listed here. Let's say uh, actually you've got three tickets for this developer. So we're going to do three times that. I'm going to put in 600, and it's going to change the calculation sheet here. Up at the top, you can also change the name. Um, and actually in the welcome page, you can change the name. So let's call this developer1. We click into this fix rate one tab, and developer1 shows up. So we've got 600 for that one. Uh, let's say for this, let's say that's our only fixed rate proposal. So I'm going to click into fixed rate two. I'm not looking at anything here, so I'm going to put zero. There's no proposal there. Everything goes down to zero. Um, rate with escalator. Let's say the opportunity here is uh, a thousand kilowatts. You've got five 200 kilowatt tickets for that one. And as you can see, you can go along and enter in that particular amount for each of these tabs, depending on what their structure is. Uh, the one other thing you might want to change is the bill credit rate. So, um, and that's one of the reasons there are multiple tabs for this. So we've got rate, es rate with escalator one, rate with escalator two. I'm going to go to one and say this is for my, this is a thousand kilowatts. And uh, this is for general service or demand metered premises. So I'm going to keep that uh, general service bill credit rate listed. For this other one, let's say I've got 400 kilowatts. But in this case, I'm actually looking at uh, my small general service. So I'm going to change the bill credit rate here to reflect that. Um, I'll say just to keep things zero or keep things simple, zero for uh, the percent discount, and let's keep it at 200 for this dollar discount and zero for this one. So I've entered in a few of these. I zeroed out the ones that uh, are that I'm not looking at. And then lastly, I'm going to click on the summary tab. So this is going to show me uh, over time net present value of cumulative savings throughout the term. So it gives me a quick look to see which of these might be more lucrative than the others. And if you want to break these down, you can go back into these tabs and look at the sheet itself. So it starts with the year, uh, the expected production of your share of the garden in that year, the subscription rate. You'll see, you know, since this is a fixed rate proposal, that rate is not changing over time. It's the same. Um, taking the production times the rate gives you what you pay to the developer. Uh, and then times 12, it's a monthly payment, so annually this is your payment. Uh, this lists the bill credit plus the rec payment, um, what you can expect to receive from those bill credits annually. And this particular column is tied to the expected annual electricity price increase. So the reason that 2.65% is informed is those bill credits, as we said before, are calculated based on Excel's uh, electricity prices for those customer classes in a given year. And uh, as electricity prices go up and down, those bill credits are then going to go up and down by a, a similar amount based on what their formula is. And that's the reason that they've filed for uh, updated rates, is because they've made a calculation that those are different. So uh, that 2.65% is going to change uh, what you can get in bill credits annually, and then the last four columns list out your savings. Annual and cumulative, just simple, and then annual and cumulative taking into account that discount rate. So I am going to pause here and see if folks have questions um, and see if some of the some of the other folks on the call have comments at this point. I think that covers it for sort of how the calculator works. So I think Trevor, it would be instructive. Now let's go to developer. What you have is fixed rate, or let's go to one of the escalator ones and change that initial okay. price to twelve cents. Rate with escalator one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the starting one to 12 yep. cents. Yep. Change that to 12 cents. Now watch what happens with the calculation. Look over there at your 
blue collar or the cumulative savings or the annual savings, you'll see that you're actually losing money initially. Okay. So you probably will have some subscription agreements where you could lose money initially and then make it up. If you took this same account and said, what happens if the now change the annual electricity price increase? You know, we're going off of past performance, but let's say we hit a patch, unlikely, but let's say that the increase is only one and a half percent for the next 10, 20 years. All of a sudden, you're negative the entire course of this contract. So you have to be very clear as you're bringing this to your finance people, there are risks. If you're especially to these ones that have an escalator in their price, with a fixed price, you're taking away some of the risk, not all of it, because as we already talked about, the bill credit can change. So that, that's a possibility. But there's more risk with these escalators than with a fixed price contract. And you need to be aware of that. I agree with Brian. This is Brad. Um, uh, that the the whole model is very sensitive around this bill credit escalation assumption of 2.65 percent that's used. So I would encourage everybody to uh, to do some sensitivities around that. 2.65 is really just based on, like you said, the last 13-year uh, average. But there's no saying that that'll continue going forward. So I would advise people to. Uh, to do some some playing with that number. Thanks, Brad, and, and thanks, Brian, as well. I think that's a great clarification. I see that, Garrett, you've got a question. You have your hand raised. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I was digging for the document to get access to this uh, Excel piece again, but I was trying to mess with that before, um, both the starting payment to the developer and the, the, the rise in energy costs over time. And I thought it indicated to me that it, those cells were, were password protected and that we did not have the ability to change those. Am, am I mistaken on that? Or do we all have the freedom to go in and change I, I thought we could only change the things that were highlighted in green, I, essentially, when I was messing around with it before. Uh, in the search calculator, you should have the ability to change anything. I haven't password protected any of the cells. In the Met Council calculator, I do believe that some of the cells are protected if you can't change them. Okay. And Brad could clarify that. Yes, uh, in ours, all the cells that were highlighted in yellow can be changed. Uh, the rest were protected, the calculations and such. But that did include, you know, all of those things that you have in your um, input column there. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Garrett. I see that Anthony has a question. Is the updated CERT calculator available on the lottery site yet? Yes. I just uploaded it before the webinar started. Uh, it's now available for download on the lottery site. So if you're having issues accessing it, please just shoot me an email and I can send it to you by email. Um, looking for questions here, I'm going to unmute uh, Millie Marsh. Millie, it looks like you've got a question. Yeah, the question is if the subscription to the private company payout increases, what about on the bill credit side from Excel? Does that increase as well? Uh, they they could increase or decrease, but it's uh, it's sort of independent of one another. So the subscription payment to the developer will increase over time if there's an escalator built in, and so that's dependent on the escalator uh, that the developer is setting. The bill credit, on the other hand, goes up and down according to how electricity prices go up and down in Excel's territory. So they, they can both change over time. The, um, the increase of the payment to the developer is rather predictable. You should know that going in, how that will change over time. But the bill credit rate from Excel Energy is more unpredictable. You're making sort of a guess at how electricity prices will behave over the next 25 years. 
Okay. So this is Brian. I'm preparing my letter to go to my city council. And one of the things that we're talking about including in that letter is taking this spreadsheet that's in front of us right now and playing with some of the really critical factors. And as Brad mentioned, the most critical factor in all of this is that row 11, the expected annual electricity price increase. So I did a series of I plugged in 1%. And then I would plug in 3%. And you get vastly different numbers. If you plug in 1%, you could be negative. If you plug in 3 you make a lot of money. And so that kind of brackets, like Brad said, that's my sensitivity testing. So I can go to people and say, here's the level of risk. I mean, I think it's highly unlikely the electricity rates are going to remain constant. I, I think there's pretty good consensus they're going to continue to go up. But how much they go up? That's a question. And so you may want to plug in some different numbers for each developer to get a range of what could happen. Thanks, Brian. I think that's a really good point. I'm looking for other questions that folks might have. I don't see any hands up at the moment, but I'm going to give folks a minute in case they do have questions. And in the meantime, I want to point out one thing. On the welcome page, uh, down here it says uh, starting bill credit rate is determined by the billing rate listed on the bill for each premise. So if you're looking at this and saying, OK, my premises are either small general service or demand metered, and I need to know that in order to know what my bill credit is, how do I know which category they fit in? We have a link here where you can click for a list of these eligible bill credit rates. I'm going to bring this up. And this is from Excel Energy. It lists yeah. out the, uh, the rate codes. So on your bill, uh, oftentimes you'll see a rate code listed there. And then the description, which is sometimes listed on the bill. Uh, and then lastly, which of the classes it falls into. In your case, either general service or small general. So that tells you for each premise what the applicable bill credit rate is. Uh, I am not seeing any more hands up. So uh, Brian or Brad uh, or, or Marion, I think Leah had to drop off. Do you have anything to add at this point? Well, just that last thing that Trevor mentioned about the your what type of electricity rate that you're on, when you look at your electricity bill, it will not say A24, A14. It will say that description that's in the next column of that little table he showed. If you're still confused, you can go to the tariff book. It's called Section 5 at Excel. If you look up tariffs for Minnesota, in Section 5 of that, book that's online, you'll see listed all the tariffs, and you'll be able to figure out based on the charges which one you're on, if you're still confused. That'll be helpful. Is this the tariff, part of the tariff book? Yeah. yeah, it's in Section 5. Thanks, Brian. Uh, yeah, Trevor, the only thing I could uh, add about this is talking about the bill credit types. You know, we're talking about that $0.09, cents, nine point nine one four per kilowatt hour. And that recently um, went down to uh, 9.740, as you mentioned. Um, and the reason that went down, uh, it's based on uh, revenues, uh, Excel takes in divided by the kilowatt hours. So that's how they determine their bill credit, and they do that by customer class. And what happened in that, I mean, electric rates are going up. We know that. Uh, so why that number went down um, was basically because their revenue column includes uh, fuel costs, and fuel costs went down. So uh, fuel costs went down <clears throat> in uh, 2015 to the point that it actually lowered this uh, community solar garden bill credit. Um, but I but I think that that was kind of an unusual circumstance, and um, 
can't see that uh, continuing that way uh, because we do uh, are seeing a lot of rate increases. Um, in fact, just this year they've got a 7.75 percent increase based on 2015 rates and a 9.8 percent increase on on uh, in 2017. Um, so anyway, the rates are going up. The reason this just adjusted down was because of that fuel issue, the fuel cost in the revenue column. Thanks, Brad. I think that's a really important point to consider. And I just want to add to that, uh, just to point out that in looking at uh, this summary tab and how your savings go over time, um, the, the discount options, so the ones that are a percent discount or a dollar discount, tend to show a little lower savings than the ones that have a, uh, definitely than the ones that have a flat rate and some that have even a flat rate, rate with an escalator. And again, it depends on what you're putting in for the assumptions, but generally that's what I've been seeing. Um, and so I think another way to, if you're talking to your council folks about this, um, you can sort of say that those discount ones are uh, low risk, low reward. So uh, let's say that bill credits do go down, which, which again, as Brad said, we don't expect, but um, you know they did in this one instance. Folks who uh, had, let's say you were uh, sub a subscriber to a solar garden, you were under that monetary discount structure of a one cent discount for the bill credit, your savings are going to be the same every year no matter what that bill credit does. Uh, somebody who was on one of the um, flat rate or rate with escalator structures, their savings are going to change depending on that bill credit. So uh, just to keep in mind how the payment structure affects your savings over time. I am not seeing any additional questions or hands up, so I think that we can probably wrap up and end early. I just want to remind folks that uh, we would like to hear from you by February 29th. And uh, again, you don't have to execute a subscription agreement by that date, but we'd like to know in writing where you're headed so that we can run that second lottery. Um, if you have questions along the way, please do reach out to us. Folks have noticed uh, a few errors that we made in the lottery. We've been able to address those. Um, other folks have noticed uh, discrepancies between what they receive uh, as a, a copy of their subscription agreement from Met Council on the lottery website and what was provided to them by the developer. So if you see anything like that, please let us know. We're doing as much clarifying as we can. Uh, but luckily, for the most part, things are running pretty smoothly. So. Thank you all so much for joining us, and uh, thanks to Brad and Brian and Leah and uh, Mary for jumping on and lending your expertise. Let's, uh, let's move forward with this, and as I said, please feel free to reach out at any time if you have questions.